There's no room upstairs. There's no room to go through the hall. Cooking is virtually impossible. We should just fill in the house with rubbish. I've got so many dolls. I know they're not real, but I do like them. Sure. It's all my stuff. It gives me comfort. It's a pain in the neck, it really is. Mansfield, Nottinghamshire. Tucked away in a quiet cul-de-sac is this three-bedroom house, home to 63-year-old grandmother, Sue. It's not like other people's houses. It was lovely when we moved in. Sue's kitchen, hallway, lounge, master bedroom, and two spare rooms are full of clutter. It makes me feel a bit ashamed and a bit annoyed that I've got myself in such a mess. There's also the small matter of nearly 100 dolls. I didn't think it was hoarded, but all of a sudden now it's crept up. This would have been the same type of doll as what my mum and dad got rid of when I was six. So to have that again, you know, I'm, I'm really pleased with that. I've got two of them, look. The house is so full of dolls, there's no room for her ten grandchildren. It's sad. It's, it, it's sad. My grandchildren haven't ever stayed here. Now, I'd love them to come and visit and be free to play and have it more child-friendly. With the horde at bursting point, Neil, her partner of 18 years, takes refuge in his man cave. Oh, I can't be in the house. It drives me nuts. I go up in the morning, I'm in here. Rest at day, more or less. Accidents aren't just waiting to happen. They've already started. We need this clear because we're falling over. We're actually falling flat on our face. Oh. All right, yeah. yeah, yeah, fine. <sighs> it's going to be on the joke. Before anyone gets hurt, Sue needs to clear her hoard and deal with the issues at its heart. The hoarding started when my biological mother died about 11 years ago and I started collecting more dolls. Then I started buying more clothes, ornaments, anything to fill that void of, of losing someone. And it's just crept up over the years. But the time has come for Sue to choose, hoard or family. There is memories in hoarding. I've bought that, it's mine. It's all my stuff. It gives me comfort. So having a clear out won't be child's play. I don't think she will to cope with losing stuff in clearance, but I'm hoping she'll get rid of the most of it. There might be a few tears, maybe tantrums. I'm a bit nervous even talking about it because this is stuff I've collected for a long time. Hoarding affects all kinds of people from all walks of life. Uh, help, help, help. Meet actress Tricia, who lives in London with her ever-growing hoard. This is the hallway. It's not really a hallway, is it? It's the junk way. Oh, let's see this one. Yes, yes. With that one of those? Yes. There's too many coats. It's a bloody thing to do with a whatever. This is a, the lounge. There's boxes here with stuff in. This is a back room, which actually was looking not too bad at one point. In the corner, I don't even know what's in the blinking corner. Oh, now I show you the kitchen. Oh, zoosh. Take me away from all this. I come up the stairs of doom and gloom. This is going to be my art room. This side is like, ugh, yuck. It's coming at you, isn't it? Coming at you. Trish has been hoarding for decades. Every nook and cranny is crammed full of clutter. I feel like taking a great big shovel and doing that with it. 
and doing that and chucking it out. Trish has been a star of stage and screen. Hetty Wainthrop, I'm in that one. I've been in loads of different types of productions. Oh, my goodness, where do I start? I was in the hair show, the 60s, 70s. I've been in lots of repertory theatre companies. Um, I've done loads of television over the years. I was in Coronation Street, EastEnders. But as time passed and the phone stopped ringing, Trisha replaced treading the boards with collecting and hoards. I think, oh, um, this insecurity you feel, you know, with the, when you don't work, and it is an insecurity. You haven't got the acting. It's sort of like making up for it. I think that's why I do what I do with the hoarding. It does make you very, very unhappy. It does make you very unhappy. Sometimes you don't realise how unhappy you actually are. In Mansfield, hoarding help is on its way to Sue and Neil's house. Declutter divas Alison and Zoe have been cleaning up for over 13 years. We understand that Sue's got a very large collection of dolls amongst everything else. I think both of us are very apprehensive at the moment because you never know what you're going to see. Hello, Hello Sue. Hello, Sue. Pleased to meet Lovely you. Lovely to meet you. So this is the downstairs hall the, area. Yeah, this is like the start of it. You know, okay. as, as soon as I come in with my shopping and stuff, unfortunately, I dump it all here. There's all sorts of stuff in here. Lots the, of bags. The, loads of bags, stuff I don't know that's under there. Oh, my goodness, what's going on here, Sue? My goodness me, it's a small landing, but there's a lot on the landing, isn't there, Alison? Mm. What is going on here? Yeah, that's my spare room. Under the first layer, I couldn't really tell you okay. what we're under, that. Wow. <laughs> oh. This room is your pride and joy, isn't it, really? Yeah, it is, really. Yeah, it can be so much better. Yes. And obviously you enjoy it a lot, because I can see how much time and effort you put into it. Yeah. But let's clear that floor. Yes. Can I see in your bedroom? Yeah, of course you can, my love, yeah. Oh, my goodness. You've got a lot of clothes. Loads. Oh, Sue. I'm coming. There is a lot of clothes. How do you find anything, Sue? I don't. Of course, you've got things in here that I don't even think should be in here. Like, you've got, like, pieces of wooden things. Well, how I see it is, I think the bedroom is key, I think that room there is key, and I think the landing and the hall, because it's dangerous. Yeah, yeah you're right. And then anything on top of that... Yeah, if we get time. ..we get done is a bonus. Lovely. If we take the things to the charity shop, you've got to promise not to go in there and buy them back. <laughs> <laughs> We're really looking forward to tomorrow, so I want you to get a good night's rest. I know you're going to be anxious, but it's going to be yeah, a good yeah. anxious. Yes. And we'll be back bright and early. Follow me. I don't know how I'm actually going to feel when stuff starts going out. Hopefully, we'll have too much time to think about it. There's a possibility if it stays a little bit longer, I might start looking at something and thinking, well, that's nice, I need that. Coming up, Tricia realises her life is in danger. This is the house that burnt down. These people were hoarders. If it happened to them, it could happen to me. And Sue battles her demons. What is the sadness that we can see manifested here in, into actual things? Sorry. In Mansfield, Sue is determined to clear her hoard to make room for her grandchildren and make sure she can share in all their special moments. I adore my grandchildren. They love their nanny. To have them stay would be like Christmas, I think. I'd really love that, you know, to just to be have more quality time with them, you know, and then to say, oh, well, I'm staying at Nanny's house, you know, that would be really lovely. Succeed, and she might also lighten partner Neil's load. I've really had my belly full of it. To be quite honest, I've just had enough. Luckily for Neil, the decluttered divas are ready to help, and they're armed with a plan for Sue. Skip the rubbish and donate anything of value to charity. It's going to be a long day, but it's going to be a really challenging day for you because there's a lot of decisions to be made. So it's going to be clean, crisp decisions. Brilliant. Charity, charity, charity. That's yeah, what I'm hoping it, for. Yeah. OK. <laughs> it, yeah. And if you find something that you're actually not sure on, just put it to one side and we'll come back to it later. Don't, don't, it. yeah, don't dwell on it. Yeah, just, don't waste just leave time. it. Yeah. 
We've got washing, we've got charity, and we've got to get rid of. Hoarders like Sue hold emotional attachments to even the most run-of-the-mill objects. I know it's mad, it gets a little bit hard because I, can, I found the other one to that downstairs. Right. I know it's only that, but I will wear Isn't that. Isn't that really funny? One, one odd one, sock. One no, stupid fine. little odd sock. sock, yeah. Clearing a decade-old hoard requires diplomacy, a firm but fair approach. We'd never throw anything away without asking her first if it's something of good or that we can actually recycle to someone else who they're going to benefit from. Oh, good. It's a slow start. But Zoe knows a little praise can go a long way. You're doing well, though, Sue. You're doing well. So that's the first bag. In it goes. Well done. One bag down, more than a few to go. A lot of it is junk. We can give a lot to charity shop as well, uh, which makes me know that I'm not actually putting it all in the skip. What's that for? Oh, it's actually a swimming hat. It looks like a swimming hat. I'll keep that. Don't know why. Um, no, I'm gonna no, I'm gonna be harsh. There you go. Oh my goodness! Well done, girl. At last, some progress. Oh, dummies. And this clearance comes with a hidden bonus. Is it? Probably empty. Oh my God! There's a hundred pound in there. There is hundred pound in there. There you go, Neil. Hundred pound in an envelope. It's mine. No, it's not where you're <laughs> paying money. It's mine. It's got to be mine, though. <laughs> As the carpet clears, it can enjoy a vacuum for the first time in years. When's the last time you vacuumed or dusted? Don't even ask. <laughs> it's a long time. Oh, that is foul. Sue is coming this to terms with clearing her clothes, but experience tells Alison that today won't all be plain sailing. At the moment in her bedroom, she's got no emotional attachment to the clothes, so it's much an easier process for her. That's crap. The next step's going to be the difficult one, is when we start to move into the second bedroom, where there are a lot of dolls, there's a lot of toys. I think it's going to be a whole different ball game. I'll chuck it over there for washing. In the leafy London suburb of Twickenham, actress Trisha is facing up to the fact that her hoard is putting her life in danger. She's visiting a house just minutes away from hers, where a family narrowly avoided tragedy. This is the house that burnt down. It was absolutely awful. The smoke was billowing everywhere. The fire, there was a fire engines, there were police, everything here. And the reason the fire started was because these people were hoarders. They were hoarding, apparently, newspapers to the ceiling. and the whole place burnt down because a fire started with some of the newspapers. Do you know they could have been killed? 30% of people in the UK who die in house fires are hoarders. If Trisha doesn't change the way she lives, she could become one of them. It makes me think, if it happened to them, it could happen to me. Fire safety assessor Simon has agreed to help Trisha make her house safe. Hello. 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 I'm Simon from London Fire. Oh, well, come in, Simon. Welcome to the House of Fun. <laughs> so what I'm looking at are sources of ignition and sources of fuel. So the source of ignition there would be overloading of the multi-way adapter, and we've got uh, paperwork around the TV as well. The amount of combustibles, large amounts of uh, cardboard. Escape routes are very cluttered, lots of things to trip over. We're also missing the door on the kitchen. Looks like we've got a, a smoke detector and to see whether it works. So no working smoke detector. Up here, the escape routes are obstructed. A fire starting in this area would grow in a matter of minutes and Trisha would be uh, trapped. Time to deliver the verdict. We normally use five ratings from okay. trivial, which means there's, there's no risk, and then there's tolerable, which is sort of where you want to be, moderate, yes. substantial, and then intolerable. 
I would rate uh, the, the property as intolerable with regards to the risk of uh, fire. Oh, no, seriously, you're, yeah, you're yeah. joking, aren't no, you? No, no, we've got a high probability of a fire starting. Oh and then if God. a fire was to start, the consequences of that fire could be quite significant in terms of you not being able to get out. Yeah. So, so, so basically, it's it's oh my god, that is absolutely that's you know I'm getting frightened and frightened and frightened. Yes. Yeah, so, more and more now. Yes, the risk is very high. Yes. Um, but the good thing is that you can take actions to reduce that that risk down. Yeah. The big one is the amount of clutter. Right. So, reducing the the amount of stuff will significantly reduce uh, the fire risk. Thank you. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, dear, 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 dear. Get a grip. I've got to get a grip. Because if I don't bloody do it, nobody else's. In the last series, we met 70-year-old Richard from Westcott in Surrey. I think there's a, a bit of a hoarder in most people in that they keep things. Richard's whole house is full of newspapers. He's been collecting them for over four decades. And they are a massive fire risk. Well, there's literally one of each paper, you know, like the uh, Mirror, the Sun, the Star, the Times, and Financial Times, you know, the whole lot. Well, overall, with stuff that's up in the roof, we, we go back to 1976. I'm probably the only person in the entire country that's doing this. This is what counts for a kitchen, which is considerably better than it once was, but obviously nowhere near as it should be. This is a through way to the loo and bathroom. You can go in there if you want to, but it's up to you. So this is... Uh, a master bedroom. There's one bed there and another one underneath that part. Ahead of you is where the, the sitting room is or was. But um, the entire content of the hall was moved into that room, so that really is quite densely packed. When the hordes spread into the outbuildings, his neighbours complained. Determined to preserve his newspaper archive, Richard had his day in court. The human rights situation is such that everyone's entitled to the, um, the enjoyment of their possessions, I think is how it's worded. So that helped me win the day. It's a labour of love, really. Now, 18 months later, his hoard is at breaking point. Richard has been adding to his collection newspaper by newspaper. Certainly it's grown, yes. I get a bit out of patience running out of space. Every sort of nook and cranny is covered. And um, my desire to retain is ever thus. So I just have to bite the bullet, as it were, and create space. So to that extent, it can be a bit dodgy, but um, such is my determination to, to, to go with it that, that I just have to put up with it. But what he lives for could be the death of him. Had I known when I started to collect them, I probably wouldn't have done, but you get to a certain point where you don't want to give up. Despite the risk, Richard's reluctant to put an end to his hoarding. Am I going to uh, stop the buying papers? The answer is no. All the time they're printed and available, I will purchase them. Mansfield-based grandmother Sue is living with a sprawling horde that's pushed her partner Neil to his wit's end. Oh, it does my head in. It really does. The reasons people start hoarding are not fully understood, but many hoarders are struggling to cope with traumatic life events. Hello. Psychologist Claire Darhill is an expert in helping people tackle their hoard and its cause. It's just a nightmare, that one, isn't it? So let's talk about the dolls. That's a one-way relationship, isn't it? They never really looked at it like that. Yes, yes. You know, they can give you joy. Oh, that's a nice new one. That's great. Put different clothes on it. Put it on the shelf, and it's just there. 
Whereas living people are running around having fun with you and nanny, nanny, nanny. The really interesting thing is those dolls, they can't hurt you, they can't reject no. you, they can't say anything to hurt you, they can't push you away. Yeah. So it's not just about the things, is it? It's about what's going on for you up here. There is underlying issues. I was absolutely... Um, I can cry again. Gobsmacked. Oh, that my mum fostered me as a baby. Right. On and off, right, until I was two, because she couldn't cope. OK. And my mum never never spoke to me, never told me really why, and it was only later on my dad explained why, you know, because she, she really wasn't well, you know, at the time, to, to look after me that well. Were you going every week and then coming back? Yeah. Uh, well, that, but as a child, that would be... Yeah, you don't know where you are. That would be very yeah, difficult. Was... We need a secure attachment and we need to know we're OK, we're safe. Our caregiver is is maintaining us in, in a consistent way. Yeah. But I think what you've had is, we're there, we're not there, we're there, we're not there, we're there. So that would leave you with some attachment issues, definitely, yeah. around security. Yeah. So, i.e., you know... My dolls, they'll never leave me. My mum left me. Yeah. But I, I can I can get attached to these things that they won't go. It's actually made a lot of sense, that has. Yeah. You know, and it, you've delved into something a lot deeper than I would have thought about. If you've been taught from a very young age that people leave, people go, they don't come back, they're just actually going to bring you more pain yeah. than they are anything that's good so or true, healthy. I've had two divorces, so that's attachment and pain. Mm. You were probably a nightmare to be married to. <laughs> you were. <laughs> with your attachment issues. I think both of them will agree on that. <laughs> um, and he you... puts up with me, don't you, Doc? I do, yeah. He does, bless you. Uh, he can't okay. leave. When he tries, he falls over things and you yeah. probably drag him back in. <laughs> Good luck, OK? Take care. Okay. Lovely to see you. Bye. Yeah, bye. bye. We may see slightly more defensive behaviour from Sue over the items and over the things, and she doesn't want that to go or she needs to think. And I certainly think that's going to be an interesting experience. I'm worried about, um, obviously, some of my stuff going, and I've got to make that decision. And this is where sometimes uh, I'm not that strong always on making decisions. But as Claire said, I've got to sort of work through all this, work through that. I'll have to deal with it in little bite-sized pieces, I think, rather than take it all in at once in one day. Coming up, Richard faces a huge decision. Secure the legacy of his pride and joy for future generations, or cash in on his collection. We're looking in the order of 50,000 papers. Wow. <coughs> they are worth money. Tricia gets help from a house clearance expert. You don't need that. No. You don't need that. <laughs> and unresolved issues return to haunt Sue. All right, you're doing really well. Come on. In Mansfield, Grandmother Sue has finally made some progress clearing her hoard. But having tackled the master bedroom, she now faces an emotional hurdle, clearing what was her daughter's room. I'm a bit sort of nervous now, even thinking about it. You know, at first it all said, oh, great fun, yeah, it's all got to go, and yeah, we're clear and all that, but, you know, hang on, this, this, is, my, this is my stuff. There's no way I could do that on my own. No way, no way. It's just too much, it's just overpowering. If we separate it into categories, you'll find it easier to sort of, like, make a decision. Yeah. I don't know what's in there that's emotionally attached to her. So we're going in there blind. I'm just hoping she's going to stay up and we'll do everything we can to keep her focused. But that can go. This that one? can go. Yeah. Are they going or keeping? Going, I think. Yeah, that's good. It's a good start. How are you finding it so far? Not, not too bad so far. Still a bit apprehensive um, because all of a sudden something will pop up mm, and I go, oh, oh, no, no, oh my God, I've, I've got to keep oh, that because, that, yeah. you know, that, um, uh, uh, like, like those. Uh, my friend wants them for a doll's <laughs> house. My daughter does, so I'm going to save those. That can stay. Okay. I do like that one. Oh, I'm going to give that, that to my friend. She's clocked the rest of the collection. Oh, OK. Oh, that's got to stay. That's for my granddaughter. 
I'm going to keep her because my friend's just given me her. Now that I will keep. I'm going to wash that and give that to my new granddaughter. Oh, I'll keep that. That's Cupid. I've not got many Cupid dolls. Okay, that stays there That's then. That's staying. We've got two Cupids. Which one are you going to keep? Can I am an all? Yeah, you can. Okay, it's because they're just such a gorgeous little face. Is that tiny tears? Oh, it is. Another tiny tears, is that? Yeah. Um, and another one. I know, I've got loads, haven't I? Look at her, I forgot all about her in here. I might call her uh, Lillian, I think. Lillian's nice. As Sue struggles to let go, the staying pile is getting bigger and bigger. I don't know half what's in here. This has been like this since my daughter left, which was, what, now, um, ten years ago. It's always been a clutter and, and hoarded in here. How long... When she left, did didn't take long. Didn't take long, and she just said, "Mum, what have you done to my room?" I bet she found that really hard. That yeah, she that yes, you... she did. Oh, yeah. don't, yeah, don't. Sure. All right. It's all right. You're doing really well. Come on. It's obviously a raw note we hit there. I just missed it when she went. I know. You know. We're great friends. You only lives up the road. That's perfect. Isn't you know, it's, it's right. sort of like opening up where she lived, you know. Sue has paid a heavy price for her hoard. It's been a long day, one that's taken its toll. It's nearly the end of the day and it has been a bit of a struggle. Oh my God, I've got this twice. Mentally and physically, absolutely shattering. Very, very tiring. I really, really didn't think I had so much stuff. I'm shocked with myself. <laughs> it's made me laugh, now it's all out. I definitely think she's worked really hard, but I think at the end of the day, it is because she wants her family back and she wants to actually be with them more than she does be with her possessions. In Twickenham, Actress Trisha, when not performing, likes hoarding. But it's turning her house into a tinderbox. And if there is a fire, Trisha's escape routes are covered in clutter. But today, the declutter cavalry is en route. Over the past decade, Queen of Clean Lindsay Crombie has cleared and cleaned hundreds of houses. Oh. <laughs> Come on in, darling. But every hoard has a story. Wow. You've got a lot of stuff, haven't you? I know. Why? Why have you got, like... Um, I think it sort of stems, you know, we could go back to lots of things. I think yeah. childhood things. Um, and my father was um, a bit of a, a make, do and mend. And I think that's where it came from with yeah. me. It's not just a case of make, do and mend. It's, oh, I can make that into something. Yeah. My dad, he was a Yorkshire man, and he'd look at a skip and he'd say, oh, I can use that. It must have come from childhood and gradually been a slow, gradual thing that's gone, you know, uh, 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 and gone up. I think what, what's been happening with me is that it sort of compensates sometimes for not having other things in my life. Yeah. For instance, when I haven't had the work I wanted, mm. but I've got a, a treasure chest mm. of beads and baubles yeah. and things, and they're all mine. And that's fine, because there's people like me that are interested. I actually love and enjoy doing things like this. I but like you. I, look like I like you. <laughs> Lindsay, what is the mindset of this? How do you make a start? Think of it like a piece of cake, and we're going to do a quarter of the room at a time. Right. By us just breaking your rooms down into sections is going to make this so much more bearable for you. I think you should tell me now where you want to start. If we go upstairs, and I'll be able to show you. Vote this way. <laughs> right, this is going to be my art room. OK. When it's finished. This is a really good size room, really light. But there's a lot of clutter, let's not lie, let's not shy away from this. No. I think we'll start with this section here. Right. You know how I said about breaking your room into four? Yes, yeah, yeah, Let's yeah. use this as chunk one of this room. OK, that chunk one is a good idea, because yeah. it's, it's where all the main thing is, isn't it? So we're going to get a bag each, and we're mm. going to go keep, recycle, throw. 
Okay. And the pile I'm seeing here, <laughs> I would really love it if 50% of this mm. could be in the throw category. I'll only throw things that really, really... Have got no purpose. I've got no purpose. Exactly. That's fine. See that case there? Yeah. You can get rid of that right, right now. Right, so there we go. We've only been in the room a few minutes and you've already told me that I'm allowed to throw away one thing. So that's amazing. Right. That's, that's done within a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Take that out. That's your first item right. cleared from the room. If you vision this room to be this really beautiful room that you come and, and sit in. Up and everything. Yeah, windows open on a sunny day, a nice cup of tea. Yeah. Have that vision. So let's get cracking. Okay. Arty stuff. Okay. I want to keep that so right, I can go in. Fabricy stuff for arty stuff. Yeah. I recycle the plastic bags, the little plastic ones to put beads in. More art things. This is leather, pieces of leather which I use. Oh, uh, yep. Yeah, we're not actually doing? getting rid of much at the moment. Well, we? we will do. We will, yeah. That is actually good for wrapping things. I know, it? but you need it. No. Good girl! <laughs> <laughs> we're not stopping there, are we? You don't need that. No. You don't need that. <laughs> I think that could be rubbish. I think it's rubbish. <laughs> oh, is it a telly? It. Yeah, but it doesn't work. In the tub. <laughs> this, oh, do you want this? If you say yes, I'm going to hit you with it. I don't know. I'm going to put that there. What we mustn't be doing here is, because this is a trap that we get into when we're decluttering, is just moving stuff. No. Because if we're just moving it, we're not actually getting anywhere. I, I, I feel okay about Lindsay in one respect, but I'm frightened in another respect because I know what they can be like. They, they want to just grab something and throw it in the bin. I'm seeing a lot of rubbish, if I'm honest with you. So what I need to do with her is just to keep fighting with her and keep showing her that she needs this end result. I want her to be ruthless. I want her to be tough. But only time will tell if Trisha really is up for the fight. In Surrey, over the past 18 months, Richard's newspaper collection has grown to colossal proportions. His whole house is an archive full of broadsheets, tabloids and Sunday supplements. It's getting to the point where it's a bit unmanageable, as you can see for yourself. But it's important to me. I, I think I'm more interested in the, the data that they hold rather than the paper per se. So they're quite a valuable resource. But it's not just the data that interests Richard. It's also the physics. As the planet rotates on its axis, a pile of papers will lean one way and then the other. And if it goes too much without being corrected, it will suddenly slip like that. Yeah. Just like that, you see. And the newspaper individually is not very heavy, but collectively it can be quite dodgy. And there's a real risk of fire. So after 40 years of hoarding, Richard is willing to explore solutions to his paper problem. I certainly would be interested in, in uh, selling them. I, I certainly wouldn't want to throw them or discard them. They have to go to a sympathetic home. Today, he's taking a tiny part of his beloved collection to be assessed by professional paper archivist, Ian. Hello. Richard, hello. Thank you for bringing your papers. Yes, you're very welcome. Like Richard, Ian has been collecting newspapers for 40 years, but he's made a business from it by turning original papers into gift sets, commemorating birthdays and anniversaries. I brought along one of our boxes as we use at the moment, so it's a printed cardboard carton. And inside, um, we've got uh, a folder, a presentation folder, and then the paper sits inside like this mm. under a gold banding with a gold tassel. Fascinating, isn't it? So, with every paper, we issue a uh, certificate of authenticity. There's we, only we... so many left of genuine papers, aren't there? Yes, for sure. There's not so many collections around now. Have you worked out, Richard, how many actual newspapers there are in your... Well, I hadn't up until today. I, well, just casually, I might have considered it, but um, we're looking in the order of 50,000 papers. Wow. That's, oh, that's, a, that's a big run of papers. Mm. Yeah. And, of course, <laughs> they are worth money. 
there, there, there's no doubts about it. You know, you could run into thousands, even yeah. tens of thousands of pounds. So yeah. it's I, well worth considering. Yeah. I, yes, indeed so. Yeah, yeah. What you might find is that there could be interest of uh, your papers with new museums or or libraries. They they might well want to do displays of them. Um, some corporate uh, yeah. like companies yeah. could be interested in them. Thank you for bringing these ones along, and I really enjoyed speaking to a fellow archivist. I will adopt that, <laughs> for, uh, that word from now on in, yes. Ian's is a valuable insight. I really think there is an opportunity for him to make money from his collection. He, he will have to work on it, and it, it will take some time. Richard faces a big decision, cash in on his collection or leave his legacy to a museum. I would be prepared to sell the collection, so I will have to grab the iron, as it were, and, uh, and, and, and come up with a, a solution which will be beneficial to future generations, as well as being helpful to me in the short term. Back in Twickenham, with Lindsay's help, Tricia is finally making progress. Right, tell you something else I want to chuck out. Um, you see those two heads at the back there? They're nothing to do with me. I didn't make those. And they're giving me the heebie-jeebies. Oh, they're awful. I know. I just found them somewhere on the road one day, and I thought, oh, I could do something with that. No, but you can't. Often, Let's get rid of them. Get rid. I don't like them, actually. And you've created some space there, which is totally amazing. Right. Okay, Good. Got rid of quite a lot of stuff in a short space of time. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's been amazing. I can't thank Lindsay enough. She's taught me the value of being disciplined, and that's something I've not been able to do for quite a while. Rubbish. 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 You know, there's more to go, but I'm getting there. If I can do this and continue with it. I can make it feel a bit more like a home. It's a lovely place. It could be even lovely. And I am passing the reins over to her to complete these tasks on her own. And I really hope she sticks to her word and she does these for me. Coming up, okay. has Sue done enough to win her daughter's approval? <laughs> oh. And I'd love for them to come to your house. Oh. I've wanted that for so um... And Trisha is taking on a new role. It's what I need to do, because if I don't do it, it's spoiling my life. In London, actress Trisha is setting the scene for a hoard-free future. Branded intolerable, her home is now en route to being fire hazard free. She's followed expert Lindsay's script and achieved amazing results. The hallway, once a blocked-up bottleneck, is now free-flowing. And Trisha's cleared her art room, leaving a space ready for creativity. Just look what's been achieved in the last few days. This one was absolute piles of stuff. This is the start of a journey for me. I'm going to be improving my health and my well-being, my mindset, and it's what I need to do. This is positivity. It's the final day of Sue's nice. clearance, and Alison and Zoe are taking charge. Well, I'm going to have you sitting down here, and I'll start going through some bits with you. Does that sound OK? That sounds lovely. Sue's anxieties have eased, and the divas are making the most of this chance to finish the job. Rubbish. Yeah, rubbish, my love. Yeah, thank you. It's the help Sue needs to turn her house into a child-friendly home. The pressure's on to try and get everything done. We've only got a very short amount of time to actually do it. But do it, they did. 
Hello. I'd like to thank you so, so much. You've just worked so hard. The children can come. It's safe for them. It's spacious for them. We've enjoyed working with you. Thank we you. loved working with you. It's been good fun. Hopefully now, between you and Neil, you'll continue to keep this up. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Sure. It, Definitely. That has got to be our... The house has got to be our pride and joy and top priority. All the best. And, OK, then. Bye. Safe journey. Take care. Safe journey. Bye, bye then. Bye. Well, I have to say I'm elated. I Absolutely elated. I think we smashed it. Yeah. We achieved more than I thought we were going to achieve. Yeah. But I think the reason for that is that Sue was so ready for it that we actually got through an awful lot. But is Sue ready for what the divas have done with her other family? <gasps> oh, my God. <gasps> it looks like a proper museum collector's room. It's gorgeous. What was once a chaos of clutter is now a home fit for Sue's prized possessions. Sue's motivation to change her hoarding ways was the promise of a visit from her grandchildren and daughter, Sean. A big, huge skip. It's almost full. Lots of stuff that she didn't need to keep over the years. This is a good sign. Last time Sean came round, Sue was almost too ashamed to let her in. Hi. Hello, Woo. I've got something to show you. <laughs> oh, All my right. goodness, I can see the floor. First stop, the lounge. Once cram-packed, it's now spick and span. <gasps> oh, my gosh. Where's everything gone? I oh, know. It's gone in that skip. It's amazing, <laughs> isn't it? Feeling very proud of you. This is an amazing transformation, and I just hope this could be a new chapter for you, um, you know, and start getting your life back on track, basically. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's going to be, darling. Upstairs, the master bedroom, a room Sue struggled to even get into, has been transformed. This is not the same room. It is, I know, it's you couldn't even stand here. You've got yeah, drawers, yeah. you look organised. Every single drawer and unit has all been sifted through. Oh all done. Well all the drawers, awesome. everything. Finally, Sean heads for her old bedroom. <gasps> wow! Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> I've the done size it. of the room. It's We've done such it. a big room. <laughs> oh, so proud of you. Your aim is to keep it like right this. No mm -hmm. shopping. No, mm -mm -mm. no, no, no shopping. Too. The only shop I'm doing is paint. <laughs> I can't wait for the kids to come and they can't wait. They can't wait to come and see their nanny and uh, come and stay over. And I'd love for them to come to your house. Oh. I've wanted that for. <laughs> so. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Cool. I feel so much different in myself. I feel happier. And she's happy, I'm happy, and oh. things are going to take a turn for the better. I feel like I can let go of the past. The clutter was really holding me back with that, I think, and just keep looking forward to the future. Next time. Oh! Things get left behind and forgotten about. I hate to say it, but it's true. I'd give him a couple of months and we're just going to be digging his body out.